Patrick Wollner. I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge. I got involved with CSAP uh, about nine, ten months ago uh, through a student initiative uh, that was launched uh, and very much supported by the whole CSAP team. Uh, and through that, I've been working with CSAP for the last nine months on setting up a new student society uh, that works on, on a similar project as CSAP, but for early career researchers. CUSP is uh, the Cambridge University Science and Policy Exchange. We've uh, started uh, a formalized structure that encompasses the whole university. We're about 12 uh, fixed committee members, uh, and we've grown to a mailing list of about 1,500 uh, researchers in the university that are interested in most of our events. We hold six lectures a year. Um, we will start holding workshops next year, uh, and we're very much uh, engaged with the rest of the CSAP agenda, starting from today's annual conference uh, to the policy fellow visits uh, and so on. I think that a portion of the early career researcher community is very interested in policy making, and that portion uh, does at the moment really have a good support network through CSAP to engage with policymakers uh, and learn how to engage policymakers. Um, and I think these people might stay in academia, they might uh, be interested in switching into the policymaking arena uh, and might then be interested in returning to academia. And for that, I think CSAP provides a great uh, framework. The benefit of establishing these connections, I think, uh, is based on two things. First of all, the communication itself is an experience that helps, helps us all uh, connect with policymakers. So even if the connections themselves aren't as fruitful, uh, the, the, the nature of these connections helps us understand how to communicate uh, with policymakers. Uh, the second thing is, of course, that these connections, in most of the cases, are extremely fruitful and that uh, these connections will um, serve, hopefully, for the long run uh, in, in, in a common interest in the science and policy making area. I think the center was absolutely fundamental in uh, shaping CUSP right from the beginning. So the support, I think, initially was uh, with Chris Tyler, Rob Doubleday, and David Cleveley giving us uh, tips on how we should set it up, what our focus should be, and who we should really be targeting uh, a student initiative in the science and policy arena. Uh, the next step was one more from an organizational perspective, helping us set up uh, the society, helping us contact potential speakers, uh, helping us uh, with our fundraising, uh, and lastly, giving us opportunities like today to host poster sessions at the annual conference, and hence providing the publicity we need to grow as a society. I think it's a really unique opportunity um, to present research uh, in, in a semi-academic context, in a policy-making context, because first of all, the skill is a very different one. Uh, we need to explain the research quite differently, uh, but of course not dilute what we're trying to say. And I think that the more events uh, our members have attended of this nature, the better they get at it. CUSP in the future uh, will grow, and we've grown quite significantly this year already um, and have an, a very established lecture program with quite a few highlights throughout the academic year. Next year, we're planning to not only host workshops that will cover specific topics, uh, but we're also planning to go into strategic partnerships with similar organizations uh, at other universities where student initiatives have already been launched. And lastly, we're also uh, in the process of organizing an annual conference, uh, quite similar to today's event, but focused very much at the early career researchers in Cambridge and at other universities. Mm -hmm.